Good morning, evening, or afternoon, everybody. It's Kago coming at you with another video. So today, I wanted to take the time to talk about the best Phase 4 farms that you could do right now so you can prepare your characters, whether that's farming some pre best items that you want or just generally making a lot of gold because while these items might not sell for a ton right now, there will be a huge demand for them come phase four so showing you guys these farms right now and you know i do plan on doing a video on each of these uh as well but they will be hopefully very helpful to you but before we get into the video be sure to like comment and subscribe everything you guys do helps my channel grow helps me get discovered and helps me help as many people as possible which is the entire point of my channel so without further ado well, let's get into the video so the biggest farm that you could probably do that has been sort of a later phase investment and a lot of people have sort of mentioned this and i even uh back in the day when i started making these four original classic wow um people even you know these were the videos that blew up the most and it is farming golden pearls so golden pearls are used for the enchant for um casters and it is very sought after because each enchant requires two of them and it is the spell power enchant here um it takes two golden pearls that's pretty much the best use form it also takes essences of fire water and air which is also important this enchant costs a lot but it gives you 30 spell power which is insane so it's a huge costly enchant but it will be very worth it and so farming golden pearls is going to be very very beneficial so the best places to farm golden pearls are going to be starting here in stranglethorn vale the nagas on this island right here drop the clams and those clams have a chance for a golden pearl it's a really good farm and you can get decent gold if you are lucky generally speaking in an hour in an hour of farming i usually averaged about two golden pearls when i made the videos back in the day obviously you can get very lucky and get more or you get very unlucky and get less it is truly just chance so if you're a lucky person <laughs> get out there and farm these golden pearls they can be pretty fun and the items that they can drop they, they drop decent uh, gold as well because they are humanoids then the next place to farm nagas is going to be in Feralis at the isle of dread right here everyone had to do this for their um epic quest line in phase two you had to go here and fight some of them but that cave is a really great place to farm especially at level 60 you can blast them really easily and it's the same thing you just get the clam you get a chance to open it and it has a chance to uh get you a golden pearl then next is going to be the coast of Ajara, fighting all of the nagas here on bay of storms coastline there are plenty of them they have a chance of dropping it with the clams same as all the others then finally we have a different type of farm instead of killing all the nagas you have swamp of sorrows where you can go this entire coastline and annihilate all the murlocs because they also drop the clams which can get you golden pearls now the next thing we're going to talk about as you saw with that enchant and a few really powerful um items such as tailoring chest piece robe of the archmage it is takes uh, essence of fire air earth and water it takes 10 of each of them and it is a very powerful robe i'd imagine it's going to be even more powerful here in sod for all the casters made or for the mages uh robe of the void is what um warlocks get and we'll talk about uh demonic runes fell cloth and stuff later as well um but these are buying on pickup so but the materials that you need to get are not so it's very very important um but we are going to talk about essences so essences of water farming right now you can go to this pool in iron tree woods and there are water elementals that you can kill for a about three to five percent chance of getting an essence of water it's one of the best places to do it um for just farming mobs and i recommend doing it now because you can very easily kill the mobs and you can get your essences now if you're not a fisherman the other one is to fish elemental pools but here on crusader strike that's pretty hard for me because of just competition and how long it takes them to spawn it's not very uh, ideal and so it can be pretty tough to do that farm but it is a way to do it especially if you're on a less popular server 
Next, we have Essence of Air, or Fire. Essence of Fire is pretty difficult because most of the mobs have a pretty low drop chance, but the best places to farm them are going to be the Entropic Blazes, uh, Entropic Blazes here, right here, north of Blood Venom Falls. There's also Wandering Infernals that are elites, so be careful there. If you go here, they have about a 3% chance of dropping Essences of Fire. Um, then you have Ungoro Crater and Fire Plume Ridge. This is a pretty great spot for Essences of Fire as well. Pretty much the entire volcano, you can just go here and blast the mobs, and you'll have a really good chance of getting it there as well. Um, and then also going into brd in black rock mountain the fire ellies there can be farmed and i would it's really hard to do it solo until you're level 60 but a level 60 mage can have a really profitable um time farming them um all the pyro uh casters outside of insidious's room as well as a few other ones because they get flame ward and it makes it really easy to do so um, and in Sodor, probably even easier, but I'm going to save that for level 60, just because getting there at 50 is a pain in the butt. You have to use a lot of invis potions, and you can just get RNG'd and just miss a bunch and not be able to even kill them. But they have an enhanced drop chance, so it could be a decent way to get it solo. The biggest way to get Essences of Fire is actually raiding Molten Core. Nearly all the bosses drop them, as well as the trash in there drops them. So a ton will flood the market. So Fire, I would honestly just wait a few weeks if you can and buy them. It's just really depends on how long they give us for that week one raiding with Molten Core. But it being a 20 man raid, um, it, there should be a ton of Essences of Fire that go up on the AH. Then next we have Earth and Air. Really, unfortunately, the only way to get these is to go to Silithus and farm this Elemental Plateau. You can do your Hydraxian Warlords rep at the same time doing this once the quests come out on this island. I think you need to be like 55 or something, but it can be a good way to make sure that you do that and get your rep. Um, you'll get rep from just killing them, but there's quests to go there and kill them as well. So you'll need that for your douse to summon Ragnaros. So it's going to be a big popular farm that people are going to be there for come the uh, launch of the raid. If they don't change anything, obviously they could change it since it is Season of Discovery, but these mobs are 58 to 60, unfortunately, so I'd only recommend farming this as a hunter. Um, it could be really tough otherwise. Then we have um, your crafting CDs. So with tailoring, you have crafting moon cloth. If with leatherworking you have cured rugged hide, and with alchemy you have arcanite, which uh, arcanite bars it's kind of up in the air because of transmute mastery. It's cheaper to literally buy the bars. So if you get an arcane crystal, I'd recommend just selling the crystal and buying a bar instead of doing the cooldown. Um, it, it's just an investment and a huge gamble right now that I don't really think is worth. But Mooncloth and Cured Rugged Hide are very valuable. So if you have alts that, you know, you leveled up in Phase 1, they're level 25, now's a great time to level them up, level their profession, leatherworking or tailoring, get them to that point where they can crank out some Mooncloth or some Cured Rugged Hide so you can make a ton of gold off of that cooldown. It's just a 4-day cooldown, very low investment if you have an Enchanter because you can just DE everything that you leveled up and sell the enchanting mats to sometimes even make profit off of leveling them up. I've done it on a few of miles. The minimum is level 41 because they do take level 250 for the recipes. Arcanite is 275. Then finally, one of the best things is Felcloth and Demonic Runes. I've done a video on all three locations here, but Jadefire Glen, um, just south right here of Jadenar, and up here at Jadefire Run are great spots to farm Felcloth and Demonic Runes. There are satyrs there that you can do. You can also come to Ajara and farm satyrs right here by the Blood Elf area as well. Um, there's not too many there, but if you get it solo, you can make some decent Felcloth and Demonic Runes. The big reason for Felcloth and Demonic Runes is Felcloth is used in a lot of stuff, such as if you're a Warlock, Robe of the Void, you need 40 Felcloth, and you need 20 Demonic Runes as well. So if you're a Warlock, you should definitely start um, getting those Demonic Runes and stuff. But if you're not a Warlock, you can also be farming them for Felcloth Gloves, which Warlocks and Shadow Priest want, and Demonic Runes are bind on pickup. So this is a huge farm to be a crafter that has Demonic Runes available, so people can try to get their gloves crafted because they will farm they can buy the essences of death fell cloth bolts of rune cloth and all of that and then they will try to trade it with you so 
very, very important and something that you should uh, be aware of. And you can make a ton of gold just sitting on it and making your moon cloth with that. Then finally, uh, a few things that you can do to stockpile is sort of look to stockpile um, a lot of the in-game materials that are used for raid consumables. So this is mainly herbing and fishing. Uh, fishing will give you bolts of rune cloth. It will give you rugged uh, leather. As well as you can get some pretty OP recipes, but that's really, 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 really rare. Um, but it can give you those in-game materials that will be more profitable once people hit the 60 because everyone's going to be needing them. There'll be a spike, especially at the launch of Phase 4. So herbing out there, getting the alchemy mats ready to go if especially if you have an alchemist you can even turn them into potions because we're at prof we're at uh professional level 300 so there's nothing higher so you can make a ton of gold just by sort of stockpiling those mats or making a bunch of the recipes as well but anyway guys that's it for the best phase four farms that you're able to do right now if you think i missed anything if you think you'd like to add anything definitely comment down below i read all of them and i love seeing you guys sort of interact with it and you know i'm not perfect i can't think of absolutely everything but i hope these tips definitely help you out a bunch so anyway i hope you have a great day and until next time i'll see you later Bye bye if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so, so much for watching. It truly means a lot to me. If you happen to find anyone that you know would also benefit from watching this video, please, please, please share it with them. It helps me out a ton and allows me to keep doing what I love every single day, and that is gaming and sort of helping people any way that I can. So finally, thank you so much, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Goodbye.